This is Steve Sharp with the Vermont Center for Geographic Information. This short video will help you understand what web map tile services are, what VCGI has to offer, and how you can leverage these within QGIS. The presentation today is going to focus on what OGC web map tile services are. We'll also touch on the tiled services hosted by VCGI and available to you. And last, we'll provide a demo on how you can load these into QGIS. OGC stands for the Open Geospatial Consortium. They are the group that sets standards and protocols for open source GIS solutions. OGC WMS stands for Dynamic Web Map Services. A web map service, or WMS, allows for the streaming of multiple layers of geographic information across the web to a desktop or mobile or browser-based client. There are certain pros to this dynamic web map service. One, it allows users to turn layers on and off. It also allows users to change the symbology. Lastly, it supports multiple coordinate systems, meaning that the user or client application can request the map and the coordinate system that they desire. However, there are some cons. It is a slower type of service. The OGC WMTS, or Web Map Tile Service, is a pre-tiled or pre-cast raster service where the maps are pre-generated as raster tiles on the server and stored so that when a request comes in, all that needs to be done is the pre-generated tiles are to be returned to the client. There are certain pros to this. Everything is pre-generated, meaning it doesn't need to be generated on demand, and that translates into fast performance. But there are some cons. The pre-cache services or tiled services are defined and pre-cached at certain scales. Therefore, any rendering at scales in between will be interpolated, depending on the client. Users cannot turn layers on and off, and they cannot change symbology. Lastly, they are limited to the specific coordinate system that has been pre-tiled. So now I'm going to talk about VCGI's tiled map services and what we have to offer. We have a series of tiled map services that we've produced with imagery. We have a series by year for Color Vermont orthophotos, so a separate service for each acquisition year. We also have a series of what we call best of, essentially mosaics of the latest best imagery, been pre-tiled as raster caches, available black and white, color and color infrared. Here's an example on the right. This is uh, NAEP imagery at a specific scale. Then as the user zooms in further, they get more detail and there's a switch to utilizing the Vermont uh, leaf off ortho imagery. We also have terrain data derived from LIDAR. For example, hill shade, as you can see here on the right, it has uh, been overlain with contours. Here you can see the same, uh, minus the contours, just showing the straight hill shade. We have also produced uh, contours at one foot interval that are also available as tiled map services. We have a series of base maps as well, USGS topographic maps pre-cached, as well as a Vermont base map, utilizing Vermont's base map data to produce pre-cached tiled map services. Next, I'm gonna jump to showing you a demo on how you can bring these services into QGIS. Okay, so I've fired up my QGIS session and now I'm ready to add some WMTS layers. To do that, I'm going to go up to the Layers menu, down to Add Layer, and then scroll down to Add WMS, WMTS Layer. It's going to give me a dialog box, and in that dialog box, in the Layers tab here, I'm going to select the New button, which will allow me to create a new service connection. Now, for the purpose of the demo, I'm going to bring in some of uh, the best of color. So I'm going to put in a title here. Let's call it Vermont Best 
put stuff in color. And I'm going to bring in the uh, state plane uh, version, meaning it's in state plane meters in AD83. So I'm going to make note of that there in the title name. And now I need to find a URL to the service. And this is the, the tricky bit here to follow. I'm going to tab on over to a web browser, and I'm here on the Vermont Open Geo Data Portal. The portal contains lots of resources, data, web map services, applications. We're interested in the web map services, and specifically, right now, we're interested in the best of. And here's where I need to find that URL. Remember, this is all about using OGC WMTS. Looking here in the upper left, I see this right here. This is my link to the WMTS service. I'm going to right click that, I'm going to copy the link address, I'm going to tab on back over and paste that into my URL. Go ahead and hit OK there. Now you'll see I have a new connection. I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. That will then give me a layer that I can now add to my map. Go ahead and close that dialog box. There we are. Now you can see we've successfully added the map. If I uh, want to be sure that uh, the coordinate system of this uh, QGIS session is in the same coordinate system as the service, I'm going to right click and I'm going to set the CRS or the coordinate system. I'm going to set the project coordinate system to the layer. That'll ensure that everything is in sync. Now you can see I can pretty much do anything that I can do with any type of web service. I can zoom around, pan around, in and out. You'll notice that at this scale, you're seeing a color nape imagery. And as I zoom in further, it then transitions to a leaf off imagery. As you can tell, the performance is pretty good again because this uh, service is providing accesses to pre cached imagery at specific scales. I'm going to talk about scales a, a little more later, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation. Uh, all of the tiling and caching is done at predefined scales. Let's jump over and add another service. I'm going to go again over to layers, add layer, add WMS, WMTS layer. Back over on the layers tab, I'm going to, I'm going to create a new connection. This time, let's play with some terrain data. So. I'm going to bring in some LiDAR hill shade. Let's give it a title. Okay, LiDAR hill shade. Again, we're going to stay in the same coordinate system to maximize our performance. Now we need to go find a URL for the LiDAR hill shade. I'm going to toggle back on over to the geodata portal. I don't need this tab anymore. And again, there's our WMTS link. We right click and we're going to copy that address. Go back on over here, paste it into the dialog box. And we can then first connect. Yes, it's good to remember that. Then add that to your map. You'll notice I, I jumped the gun there and accidentally added the imagery again uh, twice. So can easily just remove that, clean that right up. So you see we have those two services that have been added, the LiDAR hill shade on the top. And uh, let's go take a look at that. There it is. Nice detailed hill shade terrain information. This is uh, all QL2 uh, LiDAR information. So it's nice high resolution. 
let's try one more WMTS service. And this one is going to be one of our base maps. So again, I'm going back over to add the WMTS, go to the layers tab, let's create a new connection again. I'm going to bring in the topo map, USGS topo. So we'll do USGS topo. Again, we'll use the state plane. Right click on the WMTS, copy that link on over, paste it in here. Hit OK. We're going to go ahead. Here's where we got to remember you got to actually connect to it first and hit add. There you go. Go ahead and close that. Now we got a topo base map. Let's zoom on in there and see what we got. Yep. Looks like a topo base map. Go to different scales. Take a look at that. Generally with this uh, topo map, I find that it's really only useful at, uh, at particular scales. Once you get uh, zoomed way out, it's um, not all that useful. But uh, it makes for a nice, quick, handy base map. But there's some fun things we can do here. So for example, um, if I go in and go to the properties of the topo map and go to my transparency settings. Maybe I'm going to ratchet down, let's see, maybe around there, 65% or so. Set an apply on that. And now what you see here is quite interesting. I have combined the topo base map with my LiDAR hill shade. And now I'm getting a nice uh, merge of that where I get the uh, nice detail of the hill shade combined with the topo gives you a nice contrast so i wanted to point out one thing is something that i had mentioned earlier which is uh the tile services being cached at specific scales let's take a look at this rest endpoint and you'll see what i mean you'll see here on the tile info it lists the uh, size of the tiles, the dots per square inch, and how many levels. In this case, there are 15 levels. And then you'll notice these scales thresholds. Okay, this is 6 million, this is 3 million, going on down to the, the finest scale that this particular service has been cached to is at 1 to 1250. Okay, so this means that uh, these are the predefined scales and generally going to get the best performance and the best image quality if you're working with the data at those scales. So for example, let's take a look here. We have this at the uh, 1 to 5,000 scale. It happens to turn out the QGIS defaults in many cases align pretty well with these state plane scales uh, that we've set up in these services. So here, here's an example. I've gone to that 1 to 5,000 scale. It looks pretty clean. Uh, and that's pretty good, but uh, you know, I'll find that, let's take a look at some intermediary scale, let's say 3000, uh, it gets a little fuzzier. It, it's not maybe all that obvious, but I just wanted to point out that as you get into intermediary scales, like here you go on this one, this is at one to 8,000, that's not a predefined scale uh, in the cache. You can see it's a bit pixelated. If I go to 10,000, which is a predefined scale, now you'll see it's a much cleaner look. So uh, that's important to keep in mind that, again, uh, one, of the, one of the cons of, of uh, pre-tiled cache services is that they uh, are cached at specific scales, which gives it the, the performance benefit, but also uh, can have a downside, as you can see here, when you're interpolating between scales. Well, that about does it. Thank you for tuning in today. Feel free to reach out to me using the contact information on the screen. Until next time.